Yes, Nicholas Lumen used the Zettelkasten note card system, but what many people are doing or suggesting to do with their Zettelkasten system, often using digital tools, is not the same thing. It represents Lumen's fundamental theory of systems to create the emergence of ideas, but Zettelkasten and systems theory are different things. Sounds like you were just arguing semantics. No. Because the Zettelkasten method has constraints and affordances which impact how we take notes, process notes, use notes, and use the tools we have. I'm listening. Systems theory is the study of systems, i.e. cohesive groups of interrelated, interdependent parts that can be natural or human-made. Every system is bounded by space and time, influenced by its environment, defined by its structure, and purpose, and expressed through its functioning. You're gonna have to break that down. A system is defined by a boundary between itself and its environment, dividing it from an infinitely complex or chaotic exterior, and the interior of the system being a zone of reduced complexity. Communication within a system operates by selecting only a limited amount of information available outside. This process is also called reduction of complexity. Very original. The criteria for which information is selected and processed is meaning. Meaning differentiating one set of potential space to another set of potential space. So the meaning we put on the information decides if it's part of our system or not. In short, and obviously meaning to you will be different from the meaning of someone else. Okay. Each system has a distinctive identity that is constantly reproduced in its communication, and it depends on what is considered meaningful and what is not. If a system fails to maintain that identity, it ceases to exist as a system and dissolves back into the environment it emerged from. So there is ongoing communication in a system to keep it around. Yes, Lumen called the process of reproduction from elements previously filtered from over-complex environments autopoesis, a term from cognitive biology. A system capable of producing and maintaining itself, creating its own parts. Like our note-taking system, each note is a part we've created. Yes, and to participate in communication, we must be able to render our thoughts and perceptions into elements of communication. This can only happen through a medium of communication, thoughts and perceptions can't be directly transmitted, and therefore the transmission needs to be received. So someone needs to be able to hear it, read it, or feel it to receive it. So basically, if you write down a note, it's in the system, and if you don't, it's not. It sounds simple when you put a context to it. I guess it becomes more complex when you have more things in the dynamic environment. Yeah. Now, systems must continually construct themselves and their perspective of reality through processing and distinction between system and environment, and self-reproduce themselves as the product of their own elements. Social systems are defined by Lumen not as action, but as recursive communication. So if we stop adding notes to the system, it fades into the environment. Not just adding notes, but communicating with the parts. Ah, so not doing anything to the note will lead it to fade into the environment. That is the theory. Hmm. In Lumen's terms, humans are neither part of society nor of any specific systems, just as they are not part of a conversation. People make conversation possible. Lumen himself once said that he was not interested in people. Now, that doesn't mean he didn't care, but rather alluding to the scope of the theory where the communicative behaviour of people is constituted, but not defined, by the dynamics of the social system. And society is constituted, but not defined, by the communicative behaviour of people. Yeah, uh, you lost me. Uh, people are parts that make up the environment of society, and societies are parts that build up the environment of people. Whatever. Um, what's this got to do with note-taking? Well, Lumen writes a system of content, like a book structure, would mean that one commits oneself once and for all, decades in advance, to a certain sequence. So the book wouldn't be part of the system, it would be part of the environment? If it is taken out of the system, yes. 
But the content can be part of the system. Why did he write so many books then? To communicate the parts to the others in the system that he was in, which would be the academic research fields he looked at, like complexity theory, collective behaviour, nonlinear dynamics, evolution theory, and many, many more areas of sociology and science. So even though they were books, because they were being added to by notes and by research and updated books, they are still part of the system? In theory. I guess his system was his Zettelkasten notes and like the 70 books and 400 articles that he wrote. Yes, all evolving over time, which is that autopoesis term mentioned earlier. Right, and the Zettelkasten note-taking method is built from the theory of systems thinking. Exactly. General systems theory was developed in the late 1960s and early 1970s, being applied into organisational life in the late 1970s, which opposed the classical management approach of organisation. What are the main differences? The classical management system sees us as machines wanting efficiency, productivity and control, suggesting there is one right way, the best way to do things. Whereas systems theory looks at the whole organism, looking to describe and explain how the organisation works, not a control everything approach, looking to achieve multiple ways to accomplish various goals. Right. In an organisation, or for a developing person, we have the input, the process, and then the output. Okay. The input in a business or job could be the resource, stock, people, boxes, those sorts of things. Whereas in knowledge management, they would be the videos, podcasts, blogs, lectures, creators, yourself, and of course, your tech, be it digital or analogue. Then there are the processes that take place, which in business could be how you make the product or service. An example could be creating content by researching a video, scripting a video, uh, recording the video, editing the video. But for knowledge management, that could be identifying highlightable points, key points, uh, collecting ideas, linking ideas, or scripting out thoughts. Then there is the output, which in business is delivering the product or service to customers, receiving profit, working with clients, or dealing with the waste of the process. In knowledge management, that could be producing a blog post, video, or other types of content, or could be using the ideas brought together to make changes to studying, workflows, or literally anything the ideas may impact. So how do I make my productivity system or note-taking system? The idea of developing a system, a productivity system, is not to create a system as they already exist, but to adapt the parts of the systems you have control over when the environment impacts a system you are working in. But I'm not productive. You still have a system to do things, but the parts of the system may need evolving or changing. The environment could also be a contributing factor. How? A key part of systems theory is that the organisations, and therefore you, are open to the environment. And I don't just mean the weather. Systems have permeable boundaries, so information can flow in and flow out, which suggests that there is an exchange with the environment. But, as you can imagine, the environment is very unpredictable. Spiking trends, lots of information, and just like, life in general. <laughs> exactly. Other businesses, competitors, creators, people, influences may change something that impact what you do, how you act, what you need to learn. Trends obviously impact what you consume. The algorithms impact what you see and influence your way of thinking. In groups of people, you may have what is known as boundary spanners that do environmental scanning. So they are looking at trends, doing keyword research to find what people are looking for. Or, for knowledge management, you may be looking for new research, updated opinions, or evolving theories that can impact what you write, how you write it, or changes you may make to your actions. Don't we all already do that? Many individuals do the environmental scanning when we are looking to learn, but we don't all have the time, patience, or focus to look heavily into environmental factors that may impact our notes and therefore our learning. A good example of this would be when consuming a piece of content that says, science says, do you look at the reference, if they put one in the content? 
the piece of content is only one piece or one part. The reference and other related information builds up the system, so lateral consumption, synthesis, critique are all parts to environmental scanning. Holism is a term used to describe the system as whole, not as a collection of separate pieces. So your notes are pieces of a system which together is greater than the sum of its parts. This suggests that two individual notes together is actually worth more than if they were seen individually. Okay, so actually seeing the connections or at least the connected notes is better than seeing the notes individually. Yes, the individual parts are interdependent and interact through mutual feedback processes. So in business, if someone is sick or is isolating for some reason, uh, it would influence the other workers needing to pick up that missing time. In knowledge management, if a note idea or concept was moved, changed or deleted, then the interconnected relationships between other notes would need to be looked at. If a note is deleted, related notes may not make sense because of the missing context, or the note was changed, again it may not make sense because of the different context. Wait, so is that why in the Zettelkasten system you have like the same note just evolved over time because of the changing context? Yes. Alongside the fact it was a paper and pen system and making new update notes was easier than scribbling out parts of the last note. Lumen wrote that original running text is often interrupted by hundreds of slips of paper, which would really help if you had loads of scribbles as well. That is where, like, the, the digital side of note-taking is better than analog, right? Mainly. But systems have goals, but are not like classical systems that have the best way. They are continuous and negotiated, so they will change and adapt as the system is impacted by the environment. You're saying my note-taking needs a goal? To bring in another fancy word, equifinality uh, is a principle system thinkers use to suggest a given state can be reached by many potential means. In other words, there is no one best way to organise, and all ways of organising are not equally efficient because what may work for one situation or one person may not work for another situation or another person. So I don't need a goal, but if I do have a goal I can get there in various ways with this theory. Yes. Uh, for example, if you are travelling from your house to the gym and the roads are empty, you may drive. But if the roads are blocked and you need to take a longer detour, cycling may be better. Unless you have a flat tyre. In which case, jogging or walking may be better. Um, unless you have a, like, a, a knee problem and maybe you just don't go to the gym. What was your point? Systems theory suggests there is not one way to organise information. Right. Feedback is another important part, negative feedback looking to correct or reduce deviations in the systems to move towards the goals, or positive feedback which changes or grows the system's current processes. But positive feedback isn't always good. But it is positive, so why call it positive feedback if it can be negative feedback? Because the impact on the person part is positive, but it may result in a negative in the system changes. That peer that is never doing homework or doesn't do their job properly, doesn't listen, gets rewarded with a sticker, a promotion or more holiday will lead to others to do the same thing. A group not doing homework, not working or not listening properly may result in the system needing negative feedback. In knowledge management, there are plenty of trendy examples where a technique, framework or philosophy works well for someone and gains attraction. Other people start using it, adapting it, trying to implement it, but the system they have is different from the system the original person had. Then negative feedback is required for changing the system and the cycle of development continues. So just because a part of someone else's system is positive for them, it doesn't mean it's going to be positive for me. Yes, so positive feedback from them impacting you may lead to negative feedback, i.e. removing things. 
So I shouldn't learn from others and use what they've done or what they're doing? That's not what I said. Positive feedback to another won't always mean positive feedback to you. So copying another person won't mean you will get the same results. So you're saying I need to work in my environment using parts from their system, bring it into my system and see if it works for me. Yeah. Uh, an important note to make here is that entropy is a key part of systems. In other words, if you leave it alone, it will fall apart. If you don't clean your house, it will be messy, dirty, things may wear down and disease could grow. The same thing happens in your notes. If you don't process or sort through what you have, it becomes messy, chaotic, and potentially stressful to look at. This is where your perception can become a contributing factor, which is a conversation for another time. Right, how do you do that? Well, traditional Zettelkasten was pen and paper, so I could argue because I use Obsidian, I'm not doing Zettelkasten on that basis. But you do it just in a digital way. Well, my notes are non-hierarchical, but I don't have a numbering system unless you class the name of a note a system, but Zettelkasten is based on time created, 1, 1.2, 1.2a, etc. Whereas my notes are names of things that are mm, changed and adapted and don't really follow a timeline. That is just the number bit. Which is also the timeline part, which builds up the foundation of the referencing. You still reference in the same way. No, I don't, because I have inline references like Zettelkasten, but I don't have a previous reference note or a future reference note. I have related topical notes and backlinks and source notes, but in Zettelkasten, backlinks didn't exist. Topical notes were on an index page including keywords, and not all source notes were included because of the size of the paper. Okay. There were literature notes which were referenced, which were often only one or two points, whereas my literature notes can have upwards of 30 points. They are still the same thing. No, because one article may have 30 notes, whereas for me, one article has one note. Okay. And because I have my topical notes at the top of each note, I don't have a keyword index, which was a big part of Zettelkasten as a starting point. Fine. In addition, Zettelkasten was his slip box full of note cards, but his system included the books and articles, which are in my obsidian. My Zettelkasten has long-form articles and linear storylines, which goes against the non-linear dynamics of the note card system. That just means you're not doing the atomic notes thing. Which was part of Zettelkasten slip box. It means I'm using the system's theory that Zettelkasten was built with, but I'm including elements of network theory in my notes, because the digital landscape we have now allows for visualizations, which Nicholas Luhmann just didn't have, then of course there is the search features and all the other digital features we have with software that, again, he didn't have access to. But I am sure he would have used the tools if he had access to the tools. Probably, but Zettelkasten slip box has constraints that I don't have, and I have affordances which Zettelkasten didn't have, meaning I'm using a different method with a similar foundation based on systems theory. Uh, can you run me through an example? My cognitive load theory note has a synopsis, not part of Zettelkasten, then index links, not part of Zettelkasten, and the backlinks go to a variety of different places, some of them narratives around a concept, others evolving narratives, and because my system's old, also some single concept notes that need to be part of the conversation before they move out into the environment. The rest of the page looks pretty long. It is. Cognitive architecture could be a note related to cognitive load theory, and then biological primary and biological secondary skills, but instead are one note. If I want to reference biological primary skills anywhere, I can search for it, like I would if it was a page, just the global search, instead of the page search. Or, because I know my notes, I would just link to cognitive load theory and change the alias on the page so I know what I'm looking for when I get there. <sighs> this video is long enough as it is, so if you still want to discuss the differences, leave a comment on YouTube or join the Discord, link in the description below. A walkthrough of my Zettelkasten 2.0, if that's uh, better, is linked in the cards above and on the end screen showing now.